there is no time quite like the Premier League summer transfer window, where Harry Kane will request a move from Tottenham, get denied, and then sign another six-year deal, Manchester United will sign another $100 million flop, and Manchester City will spend $50 million on another fullback. This summer transfer window has actually been one of the most sensible in recent memory, with no team making any outrageous transfers so far. I'm looking at you, Manchester United. Let's see how each team is doing so far. The Erling Haaland saga is finally over with Manchester City spending over $100 million on an actual number 9. Now we can finally find out if bald fraud Pep truly needed a striker in order to win a Champions League trophy. Haaland cost over $100 million in total, but the release clause was technically only $50 million. So keep that in mind when you want to clown your Manchester United friends that he costs less than Maguire, or your Arsenal friends that he costs less than Pepe. No summer transfer window would be complete without bald fraud Pep spending $50 million on a fullback, and it seems like City might actually sign Brighton's Cucurella for around $50 million sometime soon, which actually makes a lot of sense. Barcelona actually had a great plan coming into this transfer window in order to bulk up their defense. Steal everything from Chelsea. Christensen and Azpilicueta are both now likely heading to Barcelona when their contracts have expired at Chelsea, and Jules Koundé, who Chelsea have been linked for for every day in the past year, is also being poached by Barcelona now. This is along with Rudiger leaving for Real Madrid to chase the bag and chase some rings. Maybe the best deal of business so far that Chelsea have made is sending Lukaku back to Inter Milan on loan for $8 million. Inter Milan were playing with Chelsea's balls the last few weeks, trying to squeeze every last penny out of them. After buying Lukaku for $124 million and making him the club's top earner, he will now go back to Inter Milan on loan for next season and will go down as one of the worst transfers ever. Danny Drinkwater is also leaving the club this year after his contract expired, which is a big shame because he was keeping the Chelsea bench warm throughout the last five seasons where he made £6 million a year. With Ajax man Ten Hag now in charge, the Manchester United transfer policy has shifted drastically. They are now only allowed to sign former Ajax players. Frankie de Jong, Anthony, De Ligt, Timber, and Gravenbach have all been linked to United this summer. The only thing left is for United to bring back the legend Daily Blind on a record fee. Time will ultimately tell to see if bringing all of Ajax to Manchester United can actually bring them some success. Pogback V2 was also in full force with Pogba returning back to Juventus. This probably means he'll become the France Pogba that we all know and love, and he will probably win a Ballon d'Or next season. Also, it'll be interesting to see if Ronaldo will <laughs> off to a better team, or if he'll want to play Ludgoretz Razgrad away. Alright Arsenal, it's time to see what stupid transfers you've made this year. And Kedia signed a new 5 year deal with worth a decent bit of change? Okay, that's not absolutely terrible. Arsenal is interested in Gabriel Jesus? Okay, that makes sense and the, the dollar amount seems reasonable. Fabio Vieira from Porto for 40 million? Damn, Porto fans have been crying about how much of a steal this deal is. And they signed US legend Matt Turner? That's it. Arsenal have won the summer window. Arsenal are also linked with center back Lissandra Martinez from Ajax and still with Leicester's Tailemans. This could be a very solid window for Arsenal, but my prediction is in true Arsenal fashion, they don't sign Tielemans and they run into midfield injury problems during the season, only to buy him for double the cost in January. Alright lads, it's Tottenham. They're not going to spend any... What the? It can't be. Perisic on a free? Bissouma for only $25 million? That's an incredible deal, granted he stays out of jail. Frazier Forster as a backup keeper and possibly 60 million for Richarlson? Conte must have Levy by the balls because Tottenham aren't playing games this window. One more center back signing in Gleison Bremer or Bastoni from Inter and Tottenham will have had an incredible window. I'm actually scared for the league if Levy keeps giving Conte what he wants because they have actually played some great football after he arrived. Liverpool have been the kings of great transfer business recently. Fabio Carvajal and Calvin Ramsey are young talents on cheap deals that could turn out to be home runs in the long term, which Liverpool seem to be really good at doing. They splashed big on Darwin Nunes to replace Sadio Mane as their starting number 9, and also Liverpool seem to be a team who give the greatest sales pitches ever. They are able to sell their bench talent for absurdly high fees that they should never be going for. Nico Williams to Fulham for $15 million. That's a lot more than I think he should go for, and also Minamino is going to Monaco for around $15 million also. That's two players who played very little for Liverpool last year, and they're going for decent fees, which is crazy, especially for a team like Liverpool. However, it's a shame that Liverpool won't be able to win another big trophy ever again, with the GOAT, Divock Origi, leaving for Milan. Oh, shit.
So we can just say it right now, Milan are the UEFA Champions League winners of 2023. You heard it here first. That's the transfer window so far for the big six clubs. Let me know if you guys want to see the rest of the teams in the Premier League.